Hey, welcome back. Okay, so I saw an Instagram post by Al Caraway. She's very Mormon. Remember the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Famous. She had her book, More Than the Tattooed Mormon, I think is what it's called. Um, she goes around speaking. Like Most people in the church know who she is. So she posted on Instagram a post that basically said, I am here today, a member of the church, because I wasn't judged. I went to church, didn't know what to wear, didn't even have any dresses. I wore a bathing suit cover-up, strapless dress, covered in tattoos, reeked of smoke, and people sat next to her. People were friendly to her. They welcomed her. She didn't feel judged. She felt accepted and loved and cared about by God, by members of the church, by the missionaries. And everyone is like talking about, oh, that's so amazing, blah, 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 all happy, positive things. But of course, I looked at it and I thought, how sad is it that as members of this church, where the sign says, all visitors welcome, awesome, she felt welcome. We, we do fellowship non-members and converts so well because we're so grateful to have them. We want to like give a good impression. But yet within our church, to members of the church, we don't treat them the same way. Why when a young woman comes to an activity and she's wearing an immodest outfit, do we tell her to leave, to go home? You can't participate unless you look a certain way. We didn't turn Al away for wearing a beach cover up that's strapless. Why when we see someone with tattoos, do we automatically assume, oh, they're rough, they're not a good dude, he must not be a member, or he sinned, like he rebelled, he got a tattoo as a member, that was bad. Someone who doesn't fit maybe the cultural norm of what people normally look like, dress like, someone who comes to church wearing jeans, someone who has bright blue hair, we don't give them that same love and that same welcome. We don't go out of our way to try to be extra kind to them and include them. I thought about it. I was like trying to play devil's advocate with myself a little bit. And I thought, well, it's like a child. You know, we set kind of rules and expectations in the church with this for the strength of the youth and the temple and general conference. We have pretty clear standards. Most things are pretty black and white. So when someone is given these set of standards or rules or guidelines that we expect them to follow and they don't, that's when we would punish our kids, right? That's when they receive some discipline. It's like, well, this is the rule and I told you to do this and you didn't. So now there's a consequence to it. But the difference is that we're not the parent. God is. God is the father. God and with him, Jesus Christ, are the judge. Not us. It's not our place to make any sort of comment. And again, trying to play devil's advocate, I was thinking, well, if we're all brothers and sisters and we're all supposed to help each other in the gospel, isn't it sort of our place to maybe try to correct some principles? Like maybe the person doesn't know and like, it's my job to tell them like, nope, this is how we dress. Hmm, is it? I don't know. If I were, let's say in Young Women's and a girl came and she was wearing something that no one else is wearing, something that you know doesn't really fit the standard. Would I say something to her? Maybe at the end of the activity, maybe depending on her interaction and how I could sense she felt, I would say something like, so glad you came today. We had so much fun. I just wanted to let you know that we usually wear skirts, dresses, shorts that come closer to our knee. And we usually wear things with sleeves, but whatever you feel comfortable in, whatever you have, don't worry about it. You do what makes you feel comfortable. I just wanted to let you know that type of a thing. And that is what I say to people when they ask me. I have so many people who message me and say, I'm going to go to church for the first time. What do I wear? And I'm like, dude, you be you. You don't have to fit in to some culture and what you think other people are asking you to do. You don't have to wear a white shirt to church. I don't know. I just really got to thinking of how much we welcome people in through our kindness and our lack of judgment. But then what is the number of people that we turn away because of our lack of welcoming and our judgments, you know? Now, I do have to say that there are so many people who stop coming to church because they were offended by something someone said, their Relief Society president or bishop, some speaker at church. People don't come to church because they don't feel welcome because no one sits by them. I do want to comment on that. I do think that, first of all, 
we don't go to church for the people. We go to church because God asked us to, because we want to renew our covenants, because we want to worship him and show him we love him. We want to renew our covenants, take the sacrament. That is the most important thing we do in our week. Of course, it makes it easier to go when you have friends and you love the ward and you feel spiritually edified and people are kind to you. Great. But it's also on you to make the most of your worship. You think I'm sitting here all alone. No one's coming and sitting next to me. No one's coming to talk to me. But there are probably at least 10 other people who feel the exact same way. So I think the the problem overall is the, the inward focusing. And this just goes for life in general. I made so many videos, especially about marriage, that tie into this individualistic attitude that we're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about that makes me uncomfortable. That goes against this standard, this expectation that I've created. That makes me feel sad. That makes me feel left out. But really, it's not about you. You know the story that Christ goes back for the one. I, I really think we, we need to do better, and it's a mindset shift. I'm totally guilty of this myself, by the way. Like I'm not the type of person who will always just go up to some random person and sit down and strike up a conversation with them. A lot of the time, I am late getting into Relief Society, so I just sit down wherever I see an open spot because I don't want to disrupt anything. I don't I'll go out of my way to try to sit next to someone and socialize with them. And I definitely could do better at that. When we see someone new at church, going up to them and introducing yourself, I have been on the other end of that. And it feels great to have people come up to me and ask me if I'm new or if I'm visiting. And it's great when people notice you. So why don't we try to be that for other people? Even if they are members their whole life. What if it's someone who hasn't been to church in a long time and they are a member? Or what if it's someone who somehow they make it every Sunday, even though they're struggling? They're obviously not keeping all the guidelines of rules. What truly matters most? What is the great commandment? Love God and love our neighbor. So exactly what Christ said, what we do unto them, we do unto him. So how we treat these people who come to church, we're treating Christ the same way. How we show our love for God is by showing our love to everyone else. I hope that instead of just saying all visitors welcome, you say all members, all visitors, all everyone. There's so many members of the church who don't feel comfortable at church in their own ward. People who leave because they feel like a black sheep. They feel like they don't belong. And I have been there. That was me, especially when I was in Utah. I was a little bit chubbier. I had dark hair. I was from the East Coast. My family aren't members of the church. I come from a divorced family. There are so many people who feel that way. People who are sitting in church who they themselves are divorced or their parents got divorced or they have a past and they've struggled with addictions or whatever that all of us are holding on to something, right? We all have things that we could say, you know, I don't exactly fit in or I'm a little bit different because of this or that or I struggled with this. Like they say that the church is a hospital and we're all sick. Jesus Christ didn't come to save the righteous. He came to save the sinners and we're all sinners. Just because maybe I do better at one thing, like I don't drink coffee and I don't watch rated R movies. I have a lot of friends who are members of the church who do both those things. Cool. I can still treat them with kindness and respect and love and not judge them. Maybe I don't understand that sin. There are a lot of things that people do that I don't understand. I'll give you an example. I see people on Instagram posting on their stories that they're at church. And then like two hours later, they post on their stories that they're at McDonald's in the drive through I'm like, do you know that you're not supposed to spend money on Sundays, right? You're not traveling. You're not on vacation. You were just at church. Don't know why they would make that decision. Good. It's not for me to know. It's not for me to understand because it's not my problem. It's not my issue. It's not my place to judge or even think about it, honestly. Maybe they know better. Maybe they don't. Not my issue. It's just my place to love them. When people would even say to me like, oh, I'm gonna go get my Diet Coke. Have fun. Not for me, no thanks. That's it. In everything in life, we don't need to create some expectation for other people that they need to live our, their lives, practice their faith, worship God the same way we do. It's just our place to love them and make them feel loved and welcome and wanted. I feel like I'm going off on like so many separate little tangents, but hopefully you understand like the takeaway here and what I'm trying to say. We're all imperfect. Yes, it's easy to see someone passing this sacrament who you know was just the night before drinking or sleeping with his girlfriend. Not my place. Just my job to love him and not treat him any differently than the kid who looks like 
you know, he's so righteous and he makes such good decisions and he's such a good boy. You know, people notice this, especially teenagers. They can see the way you treat someone else as compared to them. They know who the favorite is. And believe me, they don't need any more reinforcement of their own insecurities that, yep, this person's better than I am. I suck. I struggle with this. I mess up in this area. This person's perfect. No one needs that. No one is better than you are. We are all sick. We are all sinners. So instead of focusing on what we don't have in common, what our differences are, and who's better at this than another, and who's sinning, or how do they look, what rules are they breaking, let's focus on what we have in common. We're all children of God. We're all wanted there. We're all loved. And we all suck. We could all do better. The way that we help each other do better isn't by telling someone, you need to do better at this. You're failing at this. It's by showing them love and making them feel like they're capable of anything, building them up, telling them they're, they're special, they're important, they're wanted, they're valued, they're loved. That's how we change. That's how we help people. That's how they change because they believe in themselves. Man, I'm getting all fired up. This could tie into so many other subjects, marriage. Gosh. Okay. I'm going to do better. I hope you guys are going to try to make an effort to do better too. And if you are the person who is feeling left out and unwanted and like you don't fit in, please don't think that. It doesn't matter what anyone says and does to confirm that belief to you. It's not true. You are loved. You are wanted. You are welcome. Please don't feel like you don't belong because you do. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.